I'll hold my comments to myself. Um, Abby. <laughs> Ready? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to show you how to do here is I have y equals x minus 2 squared um, plus 2. And so to graph this in vertex form, we need to remember again, what is our vertex form? Our vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now remember, our h and our k told us what our horizontal and vertical transformations are. It's pretty helpful, you guys. So first thing we want to do is identify the axis symmetry. Axis symmetry is x equals h. Now remember, the formula says x opposite of h. So it's x opposite of h. So h is equal to the number 2, not negative 2. x equals, I'm sorry, x equals positive. I know, I just said it and I didn't do it. So x equals 2. But I'm saying the most common mistake is people say that x equals negative 2. Why don't we say that again? Why is it 2 and not negative 2? No, because it's opposite. Huh? I'm supposed to say. No, it's not going to be the absolute value. It's always going to be, just think of it this way. This says x opposite of h. So x opposite, then h then is negative 2. For instance, if I wrote x plus 2, that would be negative. Why? Because I can write x opposite of negative 2. x opposite negative 2. x minus negative 2 is the same thing as x plus 2. If you want to think of it just the easy way, just always know it's the opposite sign. Whatever one sign is inside the function, it's just the opposite. So it's the easiest. Positive, it's <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's the easy way to go about it. Um, the next thing is uh, to identify the vertex. The vertex, remember, is just hk. But k is in its own format. So therefore, hk is just 2 comma 2. Because it's not, this is x opposite of h x opposite of h, and then it's just k. So whatever your value is, if it's plus, it's plus. If it's minus, it's minus. This just tells you to take the opposite of the sign, whatever you see in there. You're going to take the opposite of it. Mm -hmm. So your vertex is 2 comma 2. So now, to graph this, um, go over 2, up 2. Also, my axis symmetry is at x equals 2. So I make a nice big dot at dash line there. and there's my axis symmetry. There's my vertex. That's not that bad, is it? No. No. And then the last thing that I look at is what is your, um, what is the value of a in this case? What is my a? A? Yep. One. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, remember when I told you about this parent graph. This is very, very helpful to make things not complicated. When your a is equal to one, you have the green parent graph, right? There's no horizontal or vertical stretch or compression, right? So all I'm basically doing by with these transformations is I'm literally just taking that green graph and shifting it two units to the right and two units up. The shape of the graph has not changed. So since the shape of the graph has not changed, there's no compression or stretching, I can use these same points. So I know here's the vertex. How do you get to the next point? You go over one, up one. You guys can use a table of values. Do you remember doing table of values over there? You can do table of values. But this is a kind of a trick, an easy way to go about without having to do the table of values. So I can go over 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last thing I want to know. Is my a in, this, in my example positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So therefore, I know my graph opens up, right? So now I go over 1, up 1. Because if it was negative, I'd go over 1, down 1. So I go over 1, up 1. Over 2, oops, over 2, up 4. Why did you go over 4? Because here's my parent graph. If you're to do a table of values for this, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. Watch. That's a different problem. Yes. But what I'm saying is the A, does this problem and this problem have the same A? Yes. So there's no compression. The only thing that these two and two tell us to do is they just take the graph and move it to the right and move it up. They don't change the shape of the graph. Oh, all right. I got you. I got you. So when you plug in the points 1 and 2, you plug in 1 in for x, you get 1 and 4. That's why I got over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. 
So the shape of the graph is exactly the same. Then you just reflect it over. And there you go. You're all done. I was kind of confused how you got a 4, though. Because, look it, if you plug in 2 over 2, how far are you going to go up? What's 2 squared? 4. That's why I had to go over there. Anybody have any other questions on that? No. Okay.